You have garnered numerous academic honors, including a Colin Powell Fellowship, a Mellon, a Mellon Mays Fellowship to conduct research on the significance of poetry in the Yemeni tribes, a Josh and Judy Weston Fellow, and a first place winner in the Ippies, which is a, a journalism award for New York Ethnic and Community Press. You are a trailblazer as a Yemeni American who has broadened your exposure to both the U.S. and Middle Eastern cultures. President Cueco, please join me in presenting the 2016 Salutatorian Medal to Aruba Malikoli. The view from here is absolutely incredible. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Good morning, class of 2016. President Cueco, our distinguished guests, First Lady Michelle Obama, Chancellor Milken, and Senator Schumer, professors, families, friends, and peers. It is an honor for me to stand in front of you today representing the graduating class. And on behalf of all of us, I would like to take this opportunity to thank everyone for coming out here to celebrate. But honestly, this is probably the easiest thing that you have done for us. So I'll, we'll go ahead and thank you for all your support, encouragement, and at times, simply your presence throughout this entire journey. Your presence in our lives and your support is what made this day possible. So thank you. I was born and raised in Yemen. And before migrating back with my family to the United States, I couldn't have imagined attending college simply because we weren't allowed to. My sisters weren't allowed to. Girls before me weren't allowed to. So that was the case. Yes, I have been a nerd since I was a little girl, but honestly, I was a nerd that knew her limits and accepted them. After experiencing a keen desire to enroll in high school, and at the same time, the support from a man who has made it possible and accepted to engage in debates and arguments with his outspoken daughter, What I, what I used to see as endless walls, they just became obstacles that I needed to either learn how to break down or learn how to climb. I fought to be allowed to pursue an education for the right to be here. I'm sure all of you standing in front of me today fall for the same thing. We earned the right to be here. My personal story I get to share with you today. I personally fought and broke a tribal tradition that destined girls in the Beni Mansour family of Yemen to the University of Kitchen rather than a proper education. I can laugh now as I remember that while my high school friends were worried about what to wear to prom and who to ask, I went through sleepless nights figuring out a blueprint for the next day's debates and arguments with my dad. <laughs> At times I cried myself to sleep after hearing from the people that were most close to me what college will do to me. It will ruin me, strip me out of my identity, my religion, my tradition, Basically, it would corrupt me. My first year in college, my aunts feared that their daughters would associate with me because, and I quote, I had no life. I attended weddings and family gatherings, still unmarried, no kids, tugging at my knees, yet they saw that I was happy. And that wasn't the norm. This wasn't the norm. This wasn't 
This was a change to a system that has been in place for generations. A system that wouldn't have changed without a desire and passion to keep pushing, without the support of my father, who had heard it all, from his siblings to the rest of the village, about, what, about my corruption, and how one day I would reduce his name and the families into ruin. He stood up for me, did not lock me up, did not shut me off, did not send me back. He did not send me back on the first plane back to Yemen to marry me off like many families do. Daddy, I'm standing here today with the first lady of the United States of America. So hold your head high and proud. You allowed me to push, to debate, to dismantle walls, to persuade, rather than shut me off like the norm. You made me into the woman I am today. For that and for so much more, I am eternally grateful. I have come to realize that success is not just me standing here in front of you today. Or as a woman who broke a tribal tradition. Success is me standing in front of you today knowing that I took this journey with the people that matter the most to me, with my family, with my community. Success is knowing that I paved the road for generation of girls to follow in my footsteps. <laughs> Success is knowing that 11 of my cousins are now enrolled in GED courses. That Muna and Fatin are graduating in the end of the month from high school. That Da and Besma are registering for college. Success is knowing that as I advance in my academic, professional, and personal life, I do so with the community I belong to. That our thoughts, our conversations, and our view of the world grew and changed and was influenced by my journey. I invite you all to take this a step further. It may be small and make substantial change, sustain, sustained changes that will may be small in day-to-day -day experiences, but could still create a wave reaction that will ultimately move us forward together as a society. And please remember that a simple conversation has the power to change a mind. here today empowered by the opportunities that I got at CCNY. Memories of struggling yet enjoying intense academic conversation with my Mellon Mays fellows. Policy analysis with my Colin Powell fellows. And the, de and the determination to seek education, elevation, and knowledge with my Sikh peers. But most importantly, I look at all of you standing in front of me today, and I am reassured that no, we do not need walls, we do not need bans against anti-Muslim or bans against any religious or ethnic groups. Hatred and terrorism has no religion, has no ethnicity. And on behalf of us all at CCNY, I invite you all and the rest of America to prolong your visit at City today. Clearly, some people need it more than others. But is it, here, it is here that you will realize that we are an example of what the rest of America can look like. Before I end, I would like to say a few words in Arabic to my mother.
who does not understand English, yet managed to attend events and conferences to support me. At times even missing when my name was called because of the way it was pronounced. So shout out to my sisters for giving her the heads up when to clap. <laughs> and who absolutely hasn't understood a word of what my speech today. But I have no doubt that if you find her in the audience, her, her eyes are filled with tears and yet there's a smile on her face. Walidati al-Ghaliyah. كلمات شكرا لا تكفي لنا قدمتيه لي ولأخوتي ونحن نسعى لصنع حياة أفضل لنا ولأولادنا سهرك وتعبك وحبك ليس إلا جزء مما جعل الله عز وجل يجعل الجنة تحت قدميك أسأل الله أن يدومك لنا حبا وعطفا وسندا ويسكنك فسيح جناته شكرا لك here at City who have made my journey special and helped me reach where I am today. A few of them were, I cannot give this speech without mentioning them by name. Thank you to Professor Bessie, Professor Kamal, <laughs> Professor John, Dr. Brownlee, Dr. Zabayos, my supervisor, Yoko from the Cohen Library, the amazing faculty and staff of the English, History, Foreign Languages, and Sikh departments. A special thanks to my family here today, my friends, and of course, all of you graduating today. <laughs> Class of 2016, congratulations to us all, and thank you.